Hey everybody, welcome to my video on the liquidity trap and quantitative easing, or just QE. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk mostly about the global financial crisis, or at least that's the context I'm going to use. And maybe you just know it as the financial crisis of 2007 and 8. Uh, it's a long story. I'm not going to tell it to you. I'm just going to give some context. But first, let me just remind you that the story involves low interest rates from the Fed, government-sponsored enterprises like Fannie and Freddie, subprime lending, ineffective credit ratings, securitizations, and mortgage-backed securities, a housing bubble, a bubble bursting, financial panic, meltdown. Uh, there's a lot to the story, a lot of moving pieces, a lot of blame to go around. I'm not going to make any commentation, commentating, whatever, on that. I just want to talk about what the liquidity trap was, why it mattered, and why we chose to do quantitative easing. So this meltdown, among other things, meant we found ourselves in a recessionary gap. So here's long-run aggregate supply, our potential GDP, short-run aggregate demand, current GDP is less than potential GDP. There we have it. We're in a recessionary gap. We have high unemployment, stuff like that. Federal Reserve policy response. Buy a bunch of bonds. Here's your money supply, your money market, your interest rate. Buy a bunch of bonds, the money supply goes up, and the interest rate goes down. Now, when it does, it can end up at or near zero. If the interest rate started high, increasing the money supply can lower it a lot. If the interest rate starts low, you can increase the money supply a lot, and the interest rate won't actually go down that far. This is what we call the liquidity trap. We call it also called a zero lower bound. The idea is this. Because interest rates can't go negative, there's a limit to what monetary policy can do. Increasing the money supply won't have any further effect on I because I is already bottomed out. So what if, like in the case of the 2008 crisis, aggregate demand didn't get all the way back even when we've hit the zero lower bound. We could find ourselves in a situation that looks like this, a little better than it was, but still in a recessionary gap, and have zero traditional monetary policy effectiveness remaining, because the interest rate's bottomed out. We already bought the bonds, we hit a liquidity trap, we're still in a recession, bad news, right? Well, that's when the Fed got a little bit more creative. They decided to get a little bit outside of this general formula of lowering interest rates to boost consumption, investment, and aggregate demand because they were running into two big problems. One of the problems was the obvious, the zero lower bound. The other one is that banks were keeping excess reserves. There was a financial crisis. There was panic and meltdown. When the Fed was buying bonds from the banks, the banks were just keeping the money in reserves because they were freaking out. And when banks keep the excess reserves, that means that the money multiplier is too low. So even as the Fed was buying more and more bonds, it wasn't increasing the money supply as fast as it should. So one problem was just about the zero lower bound. The other problem is about getting banks to do their part of money creation. So, what is quantitative easing? Because this was the Fed's answer to this problem. Quantitative easing happened in three phases, between 2008 and 2012. It's been tried in other places, like in Japan, too. It wasn't like a completely original idea, but it was kind of a new deal for us, because the Fed typically only buys short-term government debt. And then the Federal Reserve bought other assets. They bought treasury notes, which are a longer-term debt, and they bought mortgage-backed securities. Yeah, this is going back to the story about uh, a housing bubble and subprime lending and securitization and all kinds of stuff. Yeah, we started buying a bunch of those securities that were at the core of the, of the housing crisis, of the financial crisis. They were these toxic assets that were holding banks back and making banks scared. And so the Fed was buying them. They were also buying bank debt. And when I say we're buying these other assets, I mean trillions of dollars worth. But anyway, uh, on the left, 
buying treasury notes helps us to manipulate long-term interest rates instead of just the short-term interest rates we normally do. And buying the mortgage-backed securities and the bank debt of trying to stabilize the financial sector. It helps the banks to calm down, to reduce panic, and hopefully to be willing to start lending again. So quantitative easing was our way to try to dodge the liquidity trap and also to inspire banks to lend a little more. And the hope would be to eventually see our aggregate demand increase even further until we get to something up in this range. But anyway, that's, that's all I really need to say about it for now. So you guys, thanks for watching. Good luck. I hope it was helpful. Happy econing.